Well, welcome to another episode of the Phoenix Mystery School podcast. And this episode is all about practical spirituality, the human and divine in harmony. And I have a beautiful guest speaker today to speak on this topic. She is an epic leader from Romania who I've had the pleasure of connecting with when we co-authored in the same book, Magdalene Codes. Her name is Anka Levin, sorry, blah. <laughs> Lavinia, emotional and energetic alchemist, intuitive soulful astrologer, author, channel and new earth leader, sacred feminine disruptor, crisis and shadow work master. She has 10 plus years of experience with psychology and angel therapy, mediumship, shamanism, womb awakening, feminine mysteries, astrology, and some initiations into energy work. So welcome so much. Thank you so much for being on this episode, Anka. Hi, and thank you so much for having me here. It's such an honor and such a blessing. I feel stoked about today. Yeah, me too. Like even from the first time that we connected and even more recently when we've been more connected, like I've just felt like we've had such a deep connection and we have so many similarities in what we actually believe in and what we practice. But I just find that you're so unique in what you do just because you have such an extensive background. You know, like you have all these modalities and you've mm -hmm. done some psychology in the past as well. So I'm just curious, how long have you known that you were an intuitive person? How long have I known? I think I've been an intuitive for my entire life since I was a child, but I didn't know that this is what you call it. Uh, I was very sensitive and um, the, that's the thing that made me feel weird and different. And then I kind of like disowned that because it was weird for me and people didn't get my sensitivity um and then i think when i went on this path let's say the awakening path the spiritual path i started slowly understanding what a sensitive is what an empath is and i started embracing that and understanding that i am one of those people maybe around six seven years ago let's say i started to really be aware that this is me right because we don't talk about it we, no. we don't talk about it in society and i even did like a short video recently talking about sensitive people and empaths being normal yes absolutely <laughs> and there's so many different realms of sensitivity and empathic traits too like i find there's an empowered version of those two traits and there's also the disempowered version, depending on your past experiences. So that must have been really difficult at times as a child, not having a lot of knowledge and support around those things. But I'm just curious mm -hmm. if you had any experiences when you were young that when you look back, you're like, oh, that makes sense. Well, the first and the most potent one uh, that I can remember is when I was like eight or nine and... I used to like suddenly wake up in the middle of the night and have this connection, this burning fire inside my heart with God and divinity and, you know, source in the universe. I didn't have a specific religious background. I wasn't like taught or, you know, told to be in a, in a certain way in this area. So it all came from this I don't know what at that time I had no idea what was going on I just like woke up in the middle of the night and I started praying and crying and asking like God for forgiveness because we're mean to each other and you know nice. little child pure words coming from from the heart that's one of the most potent things that I can remember and then maybe my search for God and Jesus, I have a special connection with Jesus and not in the religious way, not at all. But at the beginning, religion was the first thing that I had handy, like most of us probably. Right. So for some years, I just, you know, looked in different confessions, different churches for that something that made me feel in that certain way, you know, that it's even tough to describe it in words because it's mm -hmm. a feeling thing that peace, that connection, that bliss, that something that you cannot describe. And I didn't find it in any church, in any religion. I just found people, people that were mean, people that were, you know, people. And yeah, human. All kinds of rules. human, yeah. 
and all kinds of rules and all kinds of like technicalities and all of that thing that was not about God, was not about divinity, was not about the heart. And I felt very strange in the sense that I had a big heart in this way that I was very open and naive and I was also not allowed to be that. I was kind of mocked because of that and I was told not to be that sensitive and stupid and silly, you know, not to trust people so much, not to believe because I used to believe that everybody's a good soul no matter where they come from, no matter the family, no matter how they look or how money they have, how much money they have. For me, it's just that they were good souls, good people, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And that makes a lot of sense now because this is who I actually am. And I started remembering all of that and embracing this, let, let's say, naivete or ingenuity, actually, yeah. you know, that I want to keep because yeah. I do believe, you know, in people, in their hearts, in their souls. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think that is something that is so incredibly lost because of people's woundings and their experiences that yeah. they start to shut down and shield their heart space. And then it makes it really difficult for people to connect in a deeper way because everyone is going deeper into separation and distrust and just not being genuine with themselves. And I it's think that's what I did. It's exactly. Also what I did. Absolutely. And the fact that you went from having an open heart to shielding to coming back to having an open heart and following that path, I think takes so much courage as well, because healing is not something that is just easy and blissful and rainbows, like so many people might describe it at times. You know, yeah. it can be very difficult. You have to face a lot of shadows it is. and it just takes so much power to do that. So that's incredible. It is. Thank you. I didn't yeah. see myself as a courageous person until recently when maybe one of my best friends started telling me those kind of things here and there like you're the most courageous person I know you're the most like you're always transforming and you're always risking and you're always going out of your comfort zone yeah. um, and I've seen someone like you so resilient so perseverant so like always there back on the saddle no matter what and never you know giving it up giving yeah. up this yeah, giving up, you know, on myself. And yeah, I completely, I so agree with that. Because what I've seen in you is that you've overcome so many big challenges. You know, you don't mm -hmm. let those things stop you, even if you go into your humanness. And of course, it's hard. And sometimes you question things. There's emotions that happen. But the fact that you can work through that and see sometimes like the big blessing in those challenges and keep questioning things and not just always following what is expected takes so much courage and bravery. Thank you for saying that. It's also a reminder for me and it does me so good. Yeah. Um, yeah. As, as I've never, this is one of my things, I've never walked this path following trends, fitting, fitting in trends. Um, I've always kind of tried my best to follow my soul, to follow, you know, what feels good for me, what I want, what is, and this is also very tough in this world where everything is boxable, where everybody needs to fit in, where there's so many recipes and rules, especially in areas like, you know, marketing, PR, sales, because we also have a business. And not only just being a person, you know, you have to be like that you have to not be like that all of those conditionings um this is also something that i discovered through other people you know as we're mirrors and we heal through each other and in relationships that i've actually always followed me in a way right you know and my calling and when i didn't know what to do and it was hard and when i was in doubt i just stopped and i said god goddess great mother i don't know take it from here show me the way wow you know because I'm just human my mind doesn't know absolutely and there's so many people here just not living their mission and their purpose so the fact yeah. that that is something that you're bringing to so many people on this planet and helping them to start understanding for themselves it's absolutely incredible and especially because you have to also have that sense of faith in your path 
and where you're going and where you're being led. So how do you do that? How do you keep that faith? It's a good question. <laughs> how do I keep the faith? You know, when I keep thinking about this, because it comes up and it comes up in the form of like, what makes you different? Like, how is it? Someone asked me one time, how is it that you manage to always be on this path and never give up and stay here? And how is it that others don't? They don't make it. And I'm like, I think I have this faith and this courage since forever. I just forgot for a bit because I also went into my dark zone. I was an employee, all of the human normal life, let's say. Um, it's something inside of me, I think, that I was born with and I just keep recognizing it. I just trust that everything's going to be okay. I just believe that everything's going to work out just fine. And it's probably also because I noticed being an observer of my life and being very aware all the time. I observed how divinity, how the universe has my back. And I observed all these, you know, examples. When I let go, when I like have an intention and then it manifests, when you know i understand why it had to be that way if something like bad happens then i get it oh okay thank you that's why it happened and you know looking back it builds on on faith it, it always does. it always ends up well in a way even i have this saying even when it's not good it's good right you know yeah. Because it's all for growth. It's all for evolution. It's all for a purpose. I strongly believe this. It's all for a purpose. And this is part of that naivete and idealistic way that I am and I feel that was so not understood and still is not very accepted or understood. Why? Because I'm not realistic. I'm not logical. I'm not 3D thinking. It's... Yeah. <laughs> I find interesting because things being logical, depending on the person, it's very subjective as well, like what's considered logical and what isn't. And I love the fact that what you said about what's kept the faith essentially this whole time is being able to see what has been working out for you. Most people have a negativity bias, so they will just look at the things that have been negative and create stories around that, which can highly limit a person. But you, you look at what has been positive through those scenarios, having that self-reflection capability and understanding what you learned so that things you can either change moving forward or what you might have missed last time around. So it just opens up your self-awareness even more. So I think that's an important connection, that sense of self-awareness, reflection, and how that actually builds on your faith. Yes, and I think I'm like positive biased. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. Like some years in my life, now I cannot, you know, not say it, as I'm also a passionate astrologer. Jupiter is my chart ruler. And for whoever knows a bit of astrology, Jupiter is the expansive one, you know, the um, creative one, the one that has fun, the one that's always positive and trusting, you know. Yeah. So that's also a bit into like, okay, this is how I'm structured. This is who I actually am. I always, <laughs> I was walking on the street the other day and I was thinking I should post something like uh, examples of bad things, let's say, quote unquote, that happen and how I can immediately turn them into positives and how I immediately see the good in them. I always do that naturally. Amazing, right? <laughs> and that's such a great skill to have naturally. Because most do not have that. Is that something yeah. that you help your clients with? I guess I do. Because, yeah, I found myself a few times when a client told me, for example, oh, but I'm so focused on problems. I'm so focused on the bad thing. I'm so focused on seeing what it doesn't work. I just immediately said, but what if this is your gift? Let's look at this from another angle. For example, what if this is a great ability and skill that you have in business and you could help people that have businesses to see what it doesn't work in their processes or, you know, company and improve that because you see that and they don't. Oh, amazing. Just an example. <laughs> right. That's incredible. Wow. Your clients are so lucky to have someone who has that type of sight and the different angles and perspectives. And I think that's what... Uh, you really developed over your life, having gone through all the things that you have. 
being yeah, able to I have that gift. Mm-hmm. I actually, it's one of the things that I'm very good at, seeing multiple angles, perspectives, having a bigger vision all the time. And sometimes when I catch, for example, my husband being caught up in like little things in life, you know, traffic and stuff like that, or if something happens, like a cold or whatever, I'm always like, but look at the bigger picture. Yeah. See this. Let's understand this. Let's look at this like this. And then it all makes sense and it always becomes a positive in this way because because every little thing leads to something better. Absolutely. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> and I'm just curious because you said you were just an employee before doing other things, you know, getting caught up in the human life. So yes. what actually propelled you into going into this style of business that is so different oh yes <laughs> well um i think i always let's like let, uh, put it a little bit in context i always had this passion for psychology since high school and i think even earlier when i because i read a lot of books and i was very fascinated with the human mind how it works why is like that and I thought of myself like someday being a psychotherapist, having my own practice, like that classical sense psychotherapist, because I didn't know anything else at that time. Yeah. And then, of course, being um, a student, I wanted to get a job for like some years, which led to a lot of years being employed. Um, and what I noticed, because I'm, a, an, I'm an explorer and I like to try things out and yeah. to give myself some challenges and to see how that is, how that plays out, what I learned from that. Uh, so I kind of take risks a lot. And I went in different jobs because I didn't find myself. I didn't find myself belonging in any way in those jobs. Um, big corporate jobs or smaller ones, it didn't matter. I just saw a very cold world focused on money and profit only and not caring about the humanness, not caring about, you know, the team and the people, their wants, their needs, their hearts being human. And this is, was my focus, but they didn't care about that. So because I didn't fit in and I didn't actually feel that I could bring value, improve something, contribute in any way, because they were not interested in my way of being and thinking. Right. Um, the universe made such a thing that actually my boss at that time very angrily told me, we don't need you, you go find yourself another job, you know, very like that. And I was so shocked about that because there was also my friends and I felt a big, big betrayal at that moment because I was always like a very good employee, very serious, very involved. Um, so that was my gate. That was the door that the universe brought up for me to just like slam the door and say, I will never return in this place again. Yeah. And this is how actually during that, like after quitting a little bit, a few months, um, angels appeared into my life. Wow. Spiritual Incredible. books appeared into my life just like that while I was finishing my studies in psychotherapy and psychology. And this is how everything opened up. That's incredible. <laughs> and I love that it was like the universe kind of slamming that door so that you had to explore and see something new because otherwise you might have stayed, right? Yeah. And yeah. I did the same thing. Same thing happened in my corporate job. <laughs> I'm sure I, got into so this. Similar. I know. And that's why I love listening to you I could listen to you all day talk about your experiences because there's so many good things that you can learn from that but I'm just curious too like when it came to that job and since they weren't interested in your way of thinking and way of being so then you were doing your psychotherapy and then you started finding the angel books what was it that you were focusing on then when the spiritual books started coming I had no idea what I was going to do I had no money saved. I had no plan. All I knew was that I was becoming sick in that place of work. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I was feeling very bad, worse and worse, uh, physically, emotionally, mentally. And it, it got to a point where I thought to myself, like, this is not worth it. In one moment, I thought that. And then when these books appeared and then, you know, I started studying a lot, like a sponge absorbing everything 
I felt that this is home. This is what I was looking for, but I didn't know. It was kind of, I think about it, it was kind of a connection back to my childhood, to that specific, you know, heart that I had and eagerness <sighs> for spiritual things and God and that. And I didn't know how. I just knew that I felt joy. I felt tears on my cheeks, you know, it was warm tears of recognition, of belonging, of finally finding something that's yeah. important. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to do now? I have no idea. Someone was supporting me at that time, the, the guy I was with at that moment. So we kind of lived very tightly for a bit there because uh, it was hard for me to start a business. And what I started with actually were um, card readings, oracle card readings with angels. That was oh. my first thing. Wow. That's such a huge jump to go from corporate and then go into readings for people. That's amazing. And I think yeah. that's going to be so relatable for so many people too, because so many people feel that way in their job. They feel sick. They can't sleep. Yeah. They can't eat. They're just stressed 24-7. And they're thinking to themselves probably, well, but this is great. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm supporting <laughs> Because I have a good paycheck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. It's secure. Mm -hmm. It's stable. I got benefits, right? But and let me tell you about the tests because a lot of people might also go through this as well. Like mm -hmm. after I quit my job and after I decided that this is my new path, my new, you know, thing in life, even though I had no idea how it's going to work. Uh, but I was decided like, this is what I'm going to do from now on, guess what? People started calling me to hire me for a lot of money on like good positions, on like everything that I wanted before and didn't happen. <laughs> and I had a moment there where I was like very like bamboozled, like what is going on with Distraction. this? <laughs> yeah, and I, and I took some time and I just felt into it. And I thought, well, do you wanna go back or do you wanna go forward? right like if i get this job okay i will have good money but i will have to work 10 12 hours a day and be a slave do right. you want that or do you want freedom and joy and following your heart with less money for now you know but just own your time and own your energy because i believe and maybe this is a very controversial thing but it's my opinion that we sell ourselves and we are slaves when we work as employees, especially in these corporations. We sell time, we sell our energy. For what? Exactly. For something that doesn't make us happy. Exactly. And especially if change isn't possible either, because same thing happened with me. I used to get in trouble and get yelled at by my superiors for treating people like people, for saying please and thank you, you know, when I was asking them to do certain duties, you know, they're like, you're making it seem like it's um, something they don't have to do. Like, I'm actually just treating them like a human being. And that's why our turnover was so low at the time, but it created a lot of conflict and a lot of issues. Wow. And I think that can be the incredible thing though, like as businesses move forward, because you're also a new earth leader and you probably know that businesses cannot be sustained this way any longer. They're going to yes. have to shift up and start to raise their frequency and the corporations are going to have to change. So I don't think that would be possible without people like you that have gone through that experience and now have come into the emotional energetics, the emotional intelligence, the shadow work mastery, so that eventually maybe you could even go back into those businesses and start to help them raise their frequency and connect their heart with what they're doing. Mm, I have one of my good friends. When you say that, I, I'm reminded of her and I actually told her because she said, I asked her one time, why aren't you happy with your job right now? Because you're very good at it. Like, but why aren't you happy? And she's like, because all the humanness is gone from it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, you notice that you are the one that could bring that humanness back because you are such a big soul and heart and such an integrity and ethical person. And that is what these businesses need right now. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. It's the new earth way. Like, I truly don't believe that businesses are going to be able to be that empty any longer. Right. Because like you said, people are just essentially selling themselves for profit instead of doing things from the heart. Because to me, 
wealth, it doesn't matter if you're empty or not, wealth comes regardless, right? So you can either do it in the integral way, or you can keep going in this upper way, which creates more chaos, more conflict. And that's when, you know, more negative stuff is going to happen a lot more often, right? A lot more illness, a lot more um, higher yes. types of conflict. <laughs> yes. I noticed one thing and I said from my observa observations uh, during these years, I noticed that there are like two kinds of people, the ones that make it through re their own will, fighting and, you know, pushing and pulling and hustling and the ones who make it with God together. Exactly. From their heart. Yes, I've then seen the exact heard. same. So you can make it either way, but ask yourself, what's the cost? exactly oh, I love that what is the cost yeah that's because they cost one. both both ways of course this costs and yeah. then you can decide which one you know is more fitted for you but I think that if you're truly truly like honest with yourself no one wants an empty job just no. to pay the bills we are here for so much more than that. And I noticed that the younger generations are already having different values and different ones. And they don't care anymore just about the money, right. just about the title. They care about contribution. They care about the earth. They care about change. They care about something different. Yeah. And, and they also care about life. treatment. Yes. Being people, like you said, just being humans with a heart yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> oh, i love this this, this is, is the so way we go good. it is <laughs> absolutely so i'm just curious for you how do you create harmony between the human side and the divinity side like how do you bridge that this is one of my most beloved uh, things let's say areas in what I do and in my life as well because I started with angels and this means that I was very like out there in the clouds not embodied not integrated at all, at all. I thought that mantras and positive affirmations and courses and workshops and all of that is what it's needed and then I was brought to reality again at some point <laughs> And I understood that I need to really look at my human self as well and to actually pay attention to my life here on earth because I have a home I live in that needs my attention, my care. I have bills to pay. I have a relationship to be in present, you know. Um, and this is how slowly I started also like being activated from the inside in a way because a lot of what I do is inner activations and initiations re revelations and downloads and stuff like this that i'm sure happen to a lot of new earth people um so it's actually infusing my divine self my spiritual way of being like for example ritual ceremony lighting a candle um, using incense, prayer, intention, awareness, honoring the land, the food, all of this is the spiritual infused in my day-to-day -day life. I mean, this way my life becomes a ceremony, becomes a ritual, becomes sacred. And this is how we bring sacredness into the day-to-day. -day. You know, those little things, remembering to say thank you for this beautiful food, blessing the food I have in front of me, and thanking all those people that contributed to that food to nourish my body, you know, having that maybe candle lit with an intention, thank you, sacred ancestral fire, you know, for bringing light, for alchemizing, I don't know what, you know, um, stepping into a forest or stepping on the earth with reverence and saying thank you mother gaia thank you forest for receiving me here in your home it makes it makes me so emotional as this is the way i live this is the way i breathe this is and i was noticing the other day how i'm so connected to this invisible to to life through all kinds of little messages you know that i see that i notice that are messages from the divine all the time 
it's not like you have to wait for Jesus to come in flesh in front of you and tell you, hey, wake up. No. <laughs> everywhere you look, everywhere you turn around, out and in, there's a message. Yeah. There's a guidance. There's a confirmation. There's yeah. something for you. Yeah, I love that. So it's really about just being present in your own body and in your own life with your spiritual practices, which I think is very important for everyone to hear because when we get into spirituality, often we just go up in the clouds, right? Oh, let's just go remote view or go to a different dimension or get involved with all these, you know, spiritual warfare things out there. Meditate all day long and call upon, I don't know what, ascended masters all day long. And I don't, I don't say these are not real or not good. They are. Totally. But here there's, there's a thing about discernment. Yep. And there's a thing about measure. Yeah. And there's also a thing about taking back your power from all of these practices, methods, gurus, ascended masters, whatever, you know, and understanding that you are multi-dimensional yes. spiritual being in flesh on this earth in the 3D, 4D, whatever, you know, where we live right now and yeah. being present and because you know there's so much taboo and so much limitation and so much programming about the body about the money about the sexuality a lot of shaming a lot of guilt a lot of fear associated so i often say when you drive a car that's a spiritual thing when you wash your clothes it's a spiritual thing when you yeah. eat it's a spiritual thing like everything is spiritual because we are of spirit exactly. there's nothing separate exactly and the reason why I bring up going all up in the clouds and different dimensions is because I used it as an escape. I didn't know that's what I was doing, but I couldn't be present no. in my physical body. And because I felt powerless to change a lot of circumstances in my life, I just went up there to hang out with the angels instead. <laughs> me too. Me too. And I know I was so shocked when, for example, I met a woman a lot of years ago and she said, I am on this path for 20 years looking and I didn't find it. And I'm like, what is she looking for 20 years? Oh my God. And this is what happens. This is what happens where you're not embodied, when you're not living your life here in your body on earth with your emotions, with your sensations. It happens that you keep searching and searching and searching and searching something somewhere up there. Left and right, teachers, gurus, methods, instruments, courses all of that but if you do not practice that if you do not integrate that in your day-to-day -day, small steps here and there that makes a big difference exactly it's like getting healing sessions and things that come to your awareness you just forget afterwards and don't implement in your day-to-day -day, right yes you, you i have this thing <laughs> you get high on zen so yeah you, <laughs> so you, just, you chase that zen dose that you yeah. go and take at the next course at the next thing you pay a lot of money you go and you spend your energy and time for that dose why because that dose makes you feel in a certain way like you're blissful and peaceful and then you go into all this love and light thing that is just talk and then that lasts for what if you really think about it because you've been there i've been there oh that absolutely one Short day time. three days a week maybe you know and then what then you're back to your miserable life where nothing changed everything's right. the same and then you go chase the dogs again how is this transformational how is this evolution how is this exactly. getting better exactly because you're not taking what you're learning and say for example there's something about boundaries that comes up are you actually implementing boundaries in your physical life past that right Yes, and so much more. For example, I remember when I was doing the angel work and archangel work, I didn't want people to like give their power away to these archangels no. just because I said so, just because I said, you know, Archangel Michael is like this and he does this. What I did was teaching them how to feel inside their bodies with their senses and how Archangel Michael is for them. Right. What, how they feel him, how, how is his presence for them? what do they feel when he appears around them you know i get shivers of course yeah. thank you michael uh and you know when this is the way that i think it all the spirituality should be done like how is it for you 
what do you feel about this yeah yeah I agree. It's the way it. for you to implement this. Right. That is There's so not a much. Yeah, because I've been in classes where they have said things like it has to be this way for every single yeah. person. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I remember them saying, it. right. They're like, archangels don't have personalities. I'm like, well, I don't know who you're talking to then because mine do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's the same with any of those types of institutions. They get so stuck in rigid. Yeah, mm -hmm. in that way of teaching, that they don't realize that everyone senses things differently. Everyone utilizes their senses in a different way. What might feel warm to me and feel good for someone else might feel completely opposite for them. Right? Mm -hmm. They might feel cold instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even even if I think about, for example. Because we both have clients and we both work with, you know, with women, with people in our in our practice. Yeah. I never say to them, this is how you should do it. This is how you need to do it. This is the rule. This is like apply because, you know, people are so taught and it's so implemented. I'm sure it happens to you as well. Like, tell me how to do it. Tell me how many times a day. Tell me how to. And I'm always, what is your intuition telling you? What's your body guiding you to do? Exactly. Take this and apply it and modify it in your own words, in your own pace, in your own way. And if something that I suggest to you to do in your life doesn't resonate, it's too much for you, you don't like it, you can tell me, I don't like this, I won't do this. That's okay. You have your own free will. You have your own power to decide. There are not and especially when you work like I do with women and it's about feminine energy and feminine empowerment, intuition is such a big thing. And the yes. compass that the body is, it's such a big thing. There's no recipes, like no three times a day or two times a day or at that, <laughs> or at that time, you know. Exactly. And another thing about blending spirituality, now it came to me in, in humanity and practical things. I say like this, it is not a separate thing it is not like a yoga class it starts at five and finishes at six totally. spirituality and spiritual practice it's something that you live it's something that you are it's a lifestyle it's from within you and it is infused in everything that you do and you are it's not finishing it's not a class no exactly because there's people that say but i didn't have the time you don't you have, have all to day have every day time. <laughs> Yes, you don't have to have the time to take a walk and just breathe consciously while you're taking the walk. Right. No time aside. You're doing while. You're exactly. Walking. It's same <laughs> with being intentional, right? Yes. Same thing. You're doing it alongside of everything that you're doing that day. Like yes. If you want to you experience wake up. more freedom, then come from that emotional state of freedom in every action that you do. Yes. Right. And I love that because so many people think the spirit is separate from the body. It's not. Yes. It's no. What what makes you alive? It animates what our entire system. Alive? <laughs> exactly, right? And if you think it from a different angle, everything is energy. Everything, yeah. including Even flesh. this physical body. I mean, it looks like yeah. a solid, but it's not. It's just a different frequency, a different vibration, a different speed. Yeah. But it's energy. The cup, exactly. the table, the glass, your flesh, your hair, your hands, your bones. So everything is that. So yeah. it cannot be separate. Exactly. There is no separation in energy. And even just thinking it from like a physical uh, standpoint too, like when we pass away, there's a definite weight difference when the spirit leaves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they've mm -hmm. done so many studies on that. Yeah, I've read that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's incredible. So you know that it's, to me, it's intertwined in every piece of our physical system. Like, it's not separate whatsoever. Like, we're, I don't like using the word enmeshed, but kind of, you know, like, it's so intertwined. Infused or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. infused. Absolutely. So there is yeah. no separation in our physicality. We're just the physical incarnation of that soul blueprint. Yes, totally agree with that. With the note that this is a beautiful concept that we need to integrate along the way because it's not an easy concept for the no. mind to grasp. No. As 
as a lot of other concepts because in the spirituality nowadays we talk about love and light everywhere at every corner but what is actually love and light what is actually that in your life are you truly feeling love if you only met me five minutes ago and you tell me i love you love and light is that actually true or let's say you're miserable you're sad you're angry and out of the sudden, just because you know this from your spiritual teachers or courses or whatever, you tell me out of that miserable state, sending you love and light, sending you love and light. How is that real? How is that integrated? Yeah. So let's stop and think a little bit. What is this actually meaning? And how do I feel it? How is this real for me? Yeah. I even invite people to make lists like actual lists like what is for example what is gentleness for you make a list yeah how is gentleness in a practical way present in your life or not present in your life and you want to bring more of it yeah absolutely you know yeah just the actual have to make everything yes. practical yeah absolutely i love that and i love that you've given so many good tips to the listeners as well <laughs> you know, to make these lists, to make these higher concepts more practical in physical action. Always. So do you have any offers currently for working? My with offers, you? Yeah, my offers currently are the ones that are about working one on one with me. Um, I'm in the process of building a beautiful membership. So stay tuned for that. Amazing. Um, and for now, it's my intuitive soulful, soulful astrology session. That is wonderful. And the other one is my clarity and direction session. It's a bomb session <laughs> just because it's so packed with getting you unstuck. That's the thing with it. And then there's my process, six months, whole woman journey okay full journey which is like a mentorship process where you come like you are and you get out a totally different person an empowered one amazing who is your ideal client who do you love to serve oh my god this is a topic that you know in our business it's <laughs> it's crazy because it's always shifting always modifying as we grow as we evolve yeah and so for now, my ideal client is that wonderful woman that knows that she can create the change. Mm -hmm. The one that is already, let's say, maybe not fully empowered, but she is empowered enough so she can take the action for herself. I know I need this. I'm ready for this commitment. I'm ready to put in the energy, the time and the focus this is important for me so i make no excuses i go and pay for it i go and do the work amazing so committed and serious about their process right yeah that's fantastic i love that thank you so thank i'm going to you. put all the links in the description of this podcast as well so you can find anka easily and I just want to thank you so much for being on this podcast because you're truly an inspiration to so many women out there. And I'm so excited to see how many people you start to impact as the years come. And despite the challenges that you've had in life and everything that you've gone through, you're actually living authentically to you. You're really bridging the spirituality and the human nature and you're doing it in such a huge wave. And that's going to make the biggest difference in the world is making this so tactical and practical for so many people out there because if it's not it's just another course it's just another concept right yes totally agree yeah so thank you thank you thank you so much for being here and thank you for sharing your wisdom and your journey and being so open and so vulnerable with all of us here so thank you thank you so much for inviting me and thank you all for listening May these seeds be planted in the fertile soil of your hearts and may they blossom with time in your own beautiful pace and rhythm. Amazing. Thank you so much.